Welcome to Inside New York City Dance with me, your host, Ashani Mfuko. We give you an inside look at everything that's hot and happening in the dance world in New York City. We connect you with the hottest dance events, performances, and people, yeah, my people, here in New York City. And today we have a fantastic show. We have the Young Choreographers Festival that happened at New York's Symphony Space. And uh, it was an incredible event. You're gonna see my backstage coverage with some of the performers and also the producer of the event and uh, some of the performances. And then I have two really powerful and incredible women who are here who are doing big things in New York City, making huge strides and changes in the dance industry. And the first guest that I have is Amber Henry, who is a media and public relations specialist. And she works with all of the hottest dance companies and studios and dance people in New York City, including myself, by the way. And uh, later on, you're gonna get to meet Michelle Bird McPhee, who is the executive director of the Ladies of Hip Hop Festival. And we'll get to know all about what's happening with that this year. But first I have my girl, Amber. What's up, Amber? Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to have you here. Oh, it's so it's always great to be with you, Ashni. Oh my gosh, Amber, you're so busy. You have so much going on with all of these different dance companies and clients and studios that you're working with. One of the first things that I wanted to talk about since I have you here today yeah. are is how can we get dancers in front of the press and in front of the media and kind of get their voices heard and get what they're doing out there because they need help. They don't know what to do. They don't have the connection. So can you give me like your top three tips for dancers to get that visibility in the, in the press? Absolutely. Um, first, of course, I say work with a publicist. Of course. You know, I mean, <laughs> they, they know what they're doing and, uh, you know, they really definitely can help you get exposure. Um, and, and to that, I just say, you know, don't, don't shortchange yourself on actually having a marketing and public relations budget. Mm -hmm. You know, actually plan for it. I know that there's no money and I know that it's difficult and everyone's just struggling to even pay their dancers. You know, but it's so important. Everything that you can do, the, the, you know, just really don't shortchange yourselves on like how much it actually costs to get exposure. Right. You know, and it's worth it. That's an investment that you need to make in yourselves as dancers, in your companies, in your organizations. You know, you really definitely need to get out there and be front runners in, mm -hmm. in making that coverage happen for yourself. So, you know, that would definitely be my first tip. Um, along with that, uh, Lee Weichel, who's uh, a you know reviewer with the New York Post. Um, and a long time you know, dance reviewer and uh, reporter, he recently actually just um, created a resource page on his website, which is mm -hmm. leeweichel.com, I think it's forward slash uh, dance press, mm -hmm. that kind of gives some tips for, here's what you should have in your press release. Ah, very <laughs> and good. And it's great because it's coming from a reporter. It's coming from a reporter who gets thousands and, and hundreds of of uh, press releases every day, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes last minute information, and you know, he's frustrated, as I'm sure many of them are, yeah. uh, when they receive information that is not fine tuned, um, huge documents, you know, or huge uh, files. Yeah. Uh, you know, it crashes their email, they don't want that, oh you my know. Gosh. And so, just, uh, you know, it's being like mindful of what the press actually want, mm -hmm. and uh, he does a really good job of kind of getting some of those tips out there, um, you know, just on what that is. And then to the other part of that, I would say, you know, actually go to some of the organization's websites, dance companies' websites who are getting that exposure, find their press releases, read them. Mm. You know, read what they're actually writing and saying and use that as a guide. Don't necessarily do the how to write a press release guides. Right. You know, because and they're, they're, they're digital, everywhere <laughs> online. Just yeah, Google how to write a press release and exactly. it's like, okay. Exactly. You know, and those are good too. Definitely look at those too. But when in the end, it comes to to having a good release that's actually getting the points across, that's getting them across, you know, they want the information in the first one to two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. And other than that, it's all fluff. And right. you need to still get that information out there. But if you don't get them in the first one to two paragraphs, if the information is not it, there, right? they have to go searching for it, they're not going to read it. And they're not going to be interested in what you're doing. Um, so that's kind of just, you know, good, good business practices when it comes to that. Obviously, a publicist, you know, public relations firms, they're going to know how to do that. They're, you know, they've been doing it for years. They're experts in that. That's what you're paying them for. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second tip I would say is just simplify your, your message. You know, kind of test your branding and test your image. You know, so uh, you and I have talked so much about this and so many times, you Absolutely. know. Um, just take it, take it, you know, you kind of got, it, it's like a, it's like an umbrella, you know, so you've got the umbrella and then just start kind of weeding things down mm -hmm. um, because there's too much information that goes out, you Absolutely. know, and you can say in two sentences what you can say in a paragraph. 
And so spend time actually figuring out what it is that you're doing. Take those artist statements and get them to be a paragraph, you know, three oh sentences, two sentences. Don't overwhelm people. You know, it, it's the exact same thing. If you if you think that it's too long to put in a program, it's too long to put in a press release. Oh, that's a good you point. Know, it's like, that's a very good point. Just think about things in that way. Like if you're, if you're thinking about like, I mean, perfect example, we have social media tools these days. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, you can only have 140 characters. That's right. <laughs> there, you know, in some other fields, like in technology press, there are some technology reporters who will only take their pitches from, you know, public relations firms now on Twitter. And if you can't get your message across in 140 characters, they won't listen to you. You know, so, so think about it in that way. Like, start getting your message to be succinct and, and you know, very clear. And then test it with people. Talk mm -hmm. to your friends, but get out of just your friend network. Oh, yes. Because you know, your friends to, will lie to you sometimes, exactly. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they're nice, you right. know. But you want to also break that down and say, look, I need constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Go to your friends who you know will tell you exactly how it is. Absolutely. You know, and get that. And then start talking. Like, talk to random people on the subway. That's, like, your best resource in New York City. You know? just start a conversation. We're dancers. We're not shy. You know? uh, we are definitely not shy. <laughs> We're not <What>? shy. <laughs> Strike up a conversation. Have your flyers. You know, most dance companies and dancers are walking around with their flyers for an event. Mm -hmm. Give it to somebody and say, hey, this is what we're doing, and start talking about that. You know, mm -hmm. and the other thing is maybe do some Googling on elevator pitches and what it means to have an elevator pitch. You know, the concept of an elevator pitch in business is that um, in the time of being in an elevator, which could be five seconds, right. you can pitch your business to somebody and they would know what you do. Yeah. If you can't say what you are as a dance company or as a dancer or as a choreographer or, an a or as an organization in an elevator pitch, five seconds to ten seconds, then you're missing the mark. Wow. You know, so work with people to get there and really define that message. That, um, that's important. It and is. that's really powerful. I think so many dancers, you know, they're so about the art form and about the dance and creating this and creating that. And it's like, listen, you have to learn how to verbalize what you're doing and get your point across very quickly to yep. get people's attention. And even for me now, with my radio show and now with the television show, I have people emailing me all the time about different events and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest, I, I definitely don't read everything. Maybe I get, uh, you know, one or two sentences in that I might read. Even if the email title is not quite there, I'm yep. like, eh, psh, I yep. don't have time, you know? Because you get so much information. It's like information overload. So exactly. you have to figure out, you know, how can I get my message across in a way that's quick, simple, like mm -hmm. you said, but also impactful so that someone sees this and they say, oh, I want to know more about this. I mean, Absolutely. that's important. Absolutely. And, and that's, a, that's a perfect opportunity to then test that with people. You know, say, hey, uh, I've got this really important news. If, you, if you're not working with a publicist, your publicist is already going to be doing these things. Right. But if you're, if you're on your own, you can't afford it, you're grassroots, you know, you're trying to get at least some exposure, um, you know, send to some friends or send to some colleagues. You know, get some people in your, in your back pocket who you know can advise you. Mm -hmm. You know, and say, hey, I need to send this really important thing. Here's three subject lines. What, uh, what's effective? Wow. You know, use those subject lines in your social media. You know, just, just start figuring out what works. Like social media, especially for, for emerging dance companies and, and choreographers, is a great tool to post things, you know, not necessarily be too opinionated, but like post something and say, this is a really cool thing, you know, or, or share your thoughts or, you know, an artistic vision that you have and mm -hmm. see how people start interacting with that. Yeah, if they comment, and get you their know. feedback. Absolutely. And get their, that's, that's one of the things that I love about social media is that you can get real-time interaction and feedback from people. If you have an idea and you want to know, people are going to be interested in this, is it going to work out, do people care, put it out on Twitter. And Absolutely. you'll get responses within five seconds. People will be tweeting you like, okay, yes, yeah. no, maybe, what is this? And another thing that I thought about, because I hear people say all the time that my parents or my family don't understand what I do, or my friends don't understand what I do. Mm -hmm. So if you're a dancer, I think it's also good to go outside of your dancer circle. You can still talk to your friends, but talk to your friends that aren't in the dance industry right. and see what they have to say. Do they yeah. understand when they hear these um, snippets that you have about what you're working on, right. are they interested? Because that's really who you want to cater to, because if they get it, then of course the dancers are going to get it. Exactly. You exactly. Know? And your audience. You know, and, and like to what you said, a lot of people will say, well, but it's, you know, I don't necessarily want to identify my brand or my style or any of these type of things. Um, you know, you have to just recognize that those are buzzwords mm -hmm. and those are things that the press, res that resonates with the press. Right. They're trained 
to be journalists, you know? And so you need to talk to them on their level, just like you're trying to talk to your audience on their level and help them understand, you know? So you have to get out of your artist uh, head and make sure that they understand you know, uh, what it is that you're actually going about doing. And if they're not getting it, then you're not going to sell tickets. Right. Absolutely. You know, so that's in the end. You, you got to, you have to have a little bit of give and take. Mm -hmm. You know, work with people so that your vision and your artistic message is still coming through. But it might just be a little bit more fine-tuned. Right. So that people can understand it. So that, you know, your family, I mean, your family is your Hello. biggest supporters. And, yeah. and that's not always the case. But absolutely, they should be understanding what it is that you're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and in the end, it's about art, but it's also about actually, you know, being able to provide for yourselves mm -hmm. as artists and be able to get people to pay to see your work. Absolutely. You know? So you have and to get the word out there mm -hmm. or else no one's going to know. And if no one knows, exactly. no one's going to come see what you're exactly. doing. So get with the PR specialist like yourself. Um, and Amber's website is www.inthelights.net so you can contact her um, but get a publicist get with a company that can help you that works in PR simplify your message and and uh, really track the stats of who's responding what the responses yes. are and all of that so yep. Amber thank you so much You're for coming so on the welcome. show uh, your tips are very helpful and again Amber is at indolights.net you can learn more about her and work with her and get some help for your public and media relations but now we're going to take a look at the Young Choreographers Festival 2012 that happened at Symphony Space here in NYC. Take a look. Hey guys, this is Ashani and Fuko here at Symphony Space in New York City for the Young Choreographers Festival 2012. I'm here with Pascal Recourt, the Artistic Director of Flexi Curve, and uh, you're one of the guest artists this evening. How are you feeling about being a part of the festival this year? I'm really, really excited. Thank you for asking. Wonderful. So tell me about your piece for this evening. Uh, the work is, I'm very excited about this work. I set this work in Switzerland and I've been here two weeks ago. It has all images of womenhood in there. So there's Little Red Riding Hood, there is Cinderella in there, there is an Amazon woman. Uh, it features four women and a very big piece of fabric that's bright red. Um, that's the short version of it. Oh, that sounds very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that piece tonight. So tell me what your company is all about, your dance company. Flexi Curve is a company that deals with social issues and social values. So it, it's, it's a wide range. The work is not always that serious. It's sometimes also performed through a lot of humor. We are very excited to be here and being a uh, part of this wonderful uh, festival. We are doing an excerpt for, uh, from a piece that the director of the company choreographed, Igal Perry, and it's a Spanish flavored uh, piece that uh, we premiered in Washington DC this season, and so the audience is going to see an excerpt of that. Tell me about your piece that's going to be featured tonight. Uh, it's a contemporary jazz solo called Malfunction. Um, it is about a mental breakdown of a young girl, um, so it gets a little intense, but it's a very good piece. I'm very lucky to have the dancer I do. Fantastic. So, is this your first year in the festival? Yes, this is my first year. I just turned 18 right before the uh, deadline, so lucky to get in. And it's 18 to 25 year old, so you barely just made it. Yeah. So good for you. A great show, and I'm really excited. This is the third annual festival. Yeah. So tell me about what's happening this year for the festival. This year, we have 11 young choreographers, which is one more than we usually present, and 10 guest artists. We're so excited. Um, and this is actually our first year of having educational programming. Why did you decide to start this festival? Why was it important to you? Um, because I'm a young choreographer, and I wanted the opportunity to be there to present work that wouldn't necessarily be given a fair shot at other festivals. So here we are. Well, I'm so glad you're doing that. It's been a wonderful show. You have really fabulous guest artists here tonight. And the young choreographers are very talented. So I was actually kind of surprised because it's really high quality, high caliber work. So what are you most excited about for this year's festival? Um, to be honest, the whole thing is exciting. It's 
my favorite day of the year. Hey guys, I'm here with the beautiful and talented Miss Camille A. Brown, Bessie Award nominee and also a guest artist tonight at the Young Choreographers Festival. Camille is also the choreographer for the new Broadway show, A Streetcar Named Desire. What's up, Camille? What's up, Ashini? How are you? I'm very good. I'm happy to see you. Camille did a solo this evening and it was absolutely stunning. Why are you involved with the Young Choreographers Festival? Well, I think it's an amazing, amazing foundation. Emily has done a wonderful job and, you know, choreography, getting yourself out there as an emerging choreographer is really hard and I think this is such a wonderful way to jumpstart that career and put yourself out there. A lot of them are starting out for the first time and I've been at it for a couple of years so it's like just the, the excitement of it is really wonderful. So what advice would you give the young choreographers who are in the festival this year? I mean I would give the advice to continue to investigate, um, speak your voice, um, do what you feel, say what you feel you need to or what's in your heart to say and don't let anyone tell you who you are or who you are not. So that's what I would say. Well, that's great advice. I'll take that advice for myself too. I'll take it for myself <laughs> as well. <laughs> Wonderful. This is Camille A. Brown, Bestie Award nominee and guest artist for the Young Choreographers Festival 2012. I'm doing a solo for one of my company dancers to uh, Ravel from Carmen. So we're doing an updated kind of different version of, of uh, Carmen, a solo for Carmen. Very nice. So why did you get involved with the Young Choreographers Festival? I think it's really important to develop a strong community of choreographers. This business is about relationships. It's about networking. And I think no matter what level of expertise you have, you have something to learn and you have something to give. So I think just bringing everyone together with all levels of experience and all different types of voices can only strengthen our community and make us a stronger New York base. Hey guys, welcome back to Inside New York City Dance. I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed the Young Choreographers Festival 2012, but now I have a powerful woman doing it, doing it big in New York City, Michelle Bird McPhee, who is the executive director of the Ladies of Hip Hop Festival. Oh my goodness, this festival is so incredible. Welcome to the show, first Thank of all. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's great to have you here. I went to the festival for the first time last summer. And oh my goodness, it was just, it was so touching. It was empowering, it was full of energy, um, sisterhood, you know, people yeah. from all over the world, all different cultures and races and ages and everything. And it, it was just such um, an incredible experience for me that I wanted to get involved in. The, thereafter, I got involved with it, uh, with the training crew. But tell everyone about how the festival got started, because right now it's huge. It's huge, it's in New York, but it's also all over the world. So how did it start? Um, so Ladies Hip Hop originally started as um, um, some, something just to train my company. Mm -hmm. So basically what I did was I had a lot of dancers who were coming to me that had more of a studio background, but mm -hmm. since my, my background was club and street, um, I also knew a bunch of elite street dancers who were women um, that weren't making that connection with women who were coming right out of the studio or who had been trained um, and were really like interested in learning hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt the best way to give them a, that experience, um, especially as some of them being too young to go to the club, was to actually bring the teachers to them. Oh wow! And I started out just training my company and then I started getting phone calls, can I come to the training, can I come to the training? So I just saw a greater need for the training in general mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of grew from you know just dance and workshops to actual performances um, we've had um, a five-day festival that includes like artwork and and um, yeah poets and MCs DJs so it kind of has just taken on a you know a life uh, of its own <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah. and it started out with just you wanting to train your company so yeah. now it's huge how many years has it been since you started it's been it? eight this is the eighth year okay yeah so there so you go. this is the eighth year um, last year we were blessed enough to be able to go to Vienna um, and present there um, this year we just like two weeks ago just got back from Portugal or no two days ago no, two, <laughs> two, two weeks two days it's all the same when you are jet lagged yes I'm jet -lagged. I understand <laughs> two days ago we just got back from Portugal presented there it's, it's been awesome and I'm looking forward to the New York festival oh my gosh it's happening yeah. this summer and who's gonna be there this year because last year 
I, I, you guys, you just have to check it out and, and see for yourself because it's, it's just incredible. You have the most talented women in hip hop that, that we've seen, and, and not just hip hop, house, whacking, everything. Yeah. Um, but it's like the, the best of the best. So who's gonna be a part of the festival this year? Um, this year, just in terms of teachers, we have a, like a whole new um, group of teachers and classes. So this year we're offering a dance hall class and um, the teacher is Neeks and she's coming from London. Wow, I took her class with you and the yeah. training crew. Exactly. Oh, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy, she's crazy, crazy in a good yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then we have um, Cherry and Ebony, who are these amazing whackers from um, Canada, who are going to be co-teaching a class. Wow. Yeah, so we're 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 really trying to offer something new, and I'm all about maintaining. Um, pioneers, but also giving an opportunity to new dancers as mm -hmm. well. So um, we have, um, coming from L.A., Marie Poppins is a popping class this year. We have a, a crumping class with wow. Valerie Cartier from Canada. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. How do you connect with all of these talented women in hip-hop from all over the world? I mean, really, you know, to, to keep... Uh, with the mission is really just to keep building the community. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, it's done a number of ways. I have women who contact me who are interested. Um, I have women that I meet when I go to other events and when I go to other countries. And you know, I really am about connecting women. So even if people don't know them or they're not well known here in New York or whatever, I still um, make an effort to kind of try and include them in some way and promote what they do. And they do the same. It's just, it's really, you know, kind of just, it's this community that starts to just really be a support for each other. Mm -hmm. So these women are also doing their own events. They're right. battling all over the world. Wow. You know what I mean? So it's 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 amazing. And it's speaking amazing. of a battle, you guys are doing a battle yeah. this year for the first yeah. one. So that's something new. Tell me about yeah. the battle and why you decided to do that this year. Well, this year we're doing a battle because I I've, I've been asked so many so of many years. <laughs> yeah. And and it's really a big part of the culture mm -hmm. right now. You know, um, it's not that uh, every part. It's not the most important part. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like, but I do want to acknowledge that there are women who are out there and that they are striving to kind of just show their talent and show their skill. And that's, mm -hmm. it's just another way to do it. It's just another venue. Right. Um, and I feel like it's just as important as the showcases and the, and the workshops, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm excited to see what people are going to do. You know, we have whacking, we have house, we have uh, popping this year. Wow. So it's going to be pretty good. And where is the show? Showcase that happens at the end of the festival. Where is that taking place? Who's performing in the showcase this year? Okay, yeah. Tell me. So, all about it. so the showcase this year, which you did attend last year. Yes, I did. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> um, because we, ha it was so big last year, and we didn't have enough room. Um, we're going to do two nights, and we're going to stay with our community partner, Perry Dance Capizio Center. They have been extremely supportive of what we do, and mm -hmm. we're just going to continue working with them. So, it's going to be on the 14th and the 15th mm -hmm. at Perry Dance. So, you'll get two opportunities to see kind of two different shows. Oh. Because oh, nice. we have performers that are coming from all over. Um, we have Versa Styles who's coming from California. We have I How who's coming from Canada. They performed last year. Mm -hmm. And then we just have a whole slew of performers that are from the New York area. Wonderful. So, yeah, I love it. Fun. I'm glad that you're doing two nights. Yeah. Okay, because last year, <laughs> luckily, I came early, so I had my seat. Right. I was sitting behind Robin Dunn, who I love. Shout out to Robin. <laughs> hey, Robin. Um, hey, Robin. But people were on the floor. People were standing. Yeah. It was like madness and mayhem, yeah. but everyone wanted to be a part of it, so that's yeah. what was so cool. One thing you said that stands out to me is that a person doesn't have to be well-known in New York City to be a part of this festival. So when you bring in these teachers, some of us here in the city, we don't know who they are. We've never heard of them, but... You recognize their talent and what they have to offer, no matter where they're from, um, and and you include them in it. And I love that because some of the things that we're kind of fighting here in the New York City is that you have the people who have the big names, and you know for whatever reason, and then you see them over and over and over. But there are so many other talented people who are here that you don't get to get that exposure with because yeah. you know they don't have a big name yet. But how are you gonna get a big name if no one gives you a chance? Exactly, it's right? all about opportunity and it really is about supporting each other. I mean, they are just as irrelevant as pioneers. So mm -hmm. new people are, you know, they're pushing the form, you yes. know what I mean? Um, they're just giving you a different way to look at it. The music is different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the movement is a little different. Um, but there's pioneers like Marjorie Smarth and yes. Keith Boogie who are amazing and, you know, uh, and just are still doing this thing that's still at the top of their game and they'll always be part of what we do you know mm -hmm. so I feel like with, as the festival grows I want to just be able to offer more opportunity to women no matter who they are and what they're doing I love that and tell me why it was important 
for the, the community of hip hop and women in, in, in particularly to have a festival like this, to be a part of, to build that community and build camaraderie because when people think of women together, they think of drama, issues, cattiness, you know, all of these things. Yeah. But from my experience, being at the showcase last summer, being a part of the training crew and all of that, there's none of that. <laughs> so so why was it important for you to create that for people? Well, I mean, I think the, the honesty, the, the reality is that does exist. Right. and that, that But that exists when I work with, with men as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, men can be just as catty. So, <laughs> so um, but it really, you know, I feel like when we get together, the focus is really about the culture and mm -hmm. really about the art. And um, no matter how you feel personally about somebody, a lot of people can put that aside to come together for either a showcase or a workshop mm -hmm. or, you know, um, just being part of something that's bigger than someone uh, than one person. Yes. And I think that's where it, it, I think people are starting to realize that it's just, it's not really about individuals. Mm -hmm. It's really about communities. And, um, and so it is necessary to have this, just one event I feel like that really focuses on women because even though we're such a large part of the culture, we're a large part of the classes that continue to grow the culture, we are a large part of the artists that are performing and working, mm -hmm. um, we're not as big in terms of um, the teachers who are who are sharing, you right. know. So I feel like it's just another aspect of you know Marjorie Smart teaches house, but Seku also teaches house, right. and I think those perspectives are both very very relevant. Mm -hmm. um, and and the same for hip hop, and the same for um, dance hall, and all these other forms. We have a lot of male teachers who are passing on the form, which is great, you know, because right. I you know you just want it to keep continue to grow and be out there, but you also need women in that perspective. So that's Absolutely. why this. Is I love it. I love it. I love it. And I can't wait for the festival this summer. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks and thank you for me. the work that you're doing in the dance community. You can learn more about the festival at ladiesofhiphopfestival.com. And uh, this is the show, guys, Inside New York City Dance, bringing you all of the hottest dance events, performances, and fabulous people in the dance world in New York City. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I will see you next time. You can connect with me on Facebook at Ashani and Fuko Dance and Twitter at Ashani and Fuko. And keep tuning tuning in inside NYC dance is the hashtag tweet me let's talk about it and let's keep the dance community in New York City growing thank you so much Michelle thank you for having we'll try to make it last and we make it up as we go there'll be no rules no map to follow Make it up as we go.